Bless him. Hallelujah. Amen. We are grateful for the opportunity. Anybody glad to be in the house of prayer? You're glad to be in the house of prayer? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So glad to be. So my grandmother used to always say, glad to be on this side of the ground. Amen. Amen. We are grateful for this opportunity and this privilege. And we're going to get into this word. Um, God is a loving God and a loving father. And oftentimes he challenges us. His challenge is always to bring us higher, to take us further. And sometimes he has to tell us some stuff we don't want to hear. Amen. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend. Amen. What that simply means is you know that when a friend hits you, he's not hitting you, trying to hurt you. That if, if, if he had to swing on you, it's to make you better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just trying to tell you this, that if some nickels should come your way today, don't take it personal. What that, what's that TikTok? It will not always be night. <laughs> Amen. 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 We're going to continue with, with um, just where God has us, this character, our character matter series. And we're taking a shift. It's the, the, the subtitle will be restoring uh, our balance when we slip. Restoring our balance when we slip. Um, Father God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Before we get into that, let's do our Bible affirmation. Let's get our Bible. Let's do our Bible affirmation. We're going to be coming from Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. I didn't mean to bring the room down. You thought, oh, what kind of message is going to be today? <laughs> I didn't mean to. I wasn't trying to bring the room down, but sometimes God has to. Listen, for, for, for healthy growth, God will have to prune sometimes. Amen. I used, to, I used to not understand why my wife would get her hair cut. It looked good. But she says it's something called split ends. And if you don't get the split end, it could ruin the whole hair shaft, the follicle. And so sometimes God has to prune us in order to keep us healthy. Amen. 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 So we're going to, we're going to, Move forward with this. Uh, let's do our Bible affir affirmation. Ready? Read. This is my Bible. It is the infallible, incorruptible, unstoppable, immutable word of God. It holds my. This is my spiritual roadmap. This is my Bible. You believe that? Give God a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Character matters. We're specifically talking about character correction. How do we restore our footing when we slip? There's been a big push for several years now on leadership and the leadership component. And building and being leaders. And I am, you, you, if you hang around me more than three minutes, you're going to hear me say something about leadership because I believe, I believe in leadership. Uh, John Maxwell says everything rises and falls on leadership. Leadership is important. It's, it's, it's vital to, to a healthy uh, organa organization. It's vital to a healthy uh, uh, group. It's, it's, it's important. In those leadership classes, in those leadership uh, uh, components, they teach uh, uh, how to be successful, how to set systems, how to, how to put things in place, setting you up for victory, setting you up for success. Very few of those classes, though, show you how to recover when you fall. Very few of those sessions, very few of those, of those, those uh, tutorials, very few of those, those, uh, those electives show you what, it, what to do when failure happens. 
And the fact of the matter is, failure will happen. The Bible says it's impossible that offenses would not come. We are going to run into times and even seasons where, where things just don't go the way we plan. Man is born of a woman, and those days are full of trouble. We're going to encounter every, every avenues and areas where it just doesn't click. And these leadership courses and these leadership cohorts, they teach you how, how to prepare yourself for victory, but very few of them show us what to do when, it fall, when the bottom falls out. I think that's important. The closest thing I could think about, and I was talking with, uh, with Minister Chris, the closest thing I could, I could think about uh, uh, a, a organized instruction on what to do when things go bad is what they used to tell us in elementary school. If, you, if your clothes catch fire, stop, drop, and roll. That's the closest I, I can think about when it comes to when, 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 when things are out of control, when, they, when you can't handle them, when the bottom is fall, falling out, Stop, drop, and roll. Learning how to fail is just, just as important as learning how to succeed. And when I say learning how, I'm not talking about setting yourself up to not, to not advance, but what do you do when, when what you tried to do doesn't happen, doesn't work? What do you do when what you poured yourself into doesn't seem to pan out? What's after that? Because there's life after that. And it's important that we understand that, we, that, that how do we, how do we, uh, Dr. Maxwell wrote a book, how do we fail forward? How can we dro drop the ball, miss the mark, and still stay in place? Here's where character comes in. Character comes into this component. How do we, how do we lose it but don't get swept away by the current. Here's where character comes in. This, this is a power. This, 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 this right here is, is powerful because we're, we're taught how to succeed. We're taught how to do it. But there's not much teaching on how to recover or recalibrate or rebound. I mean, we're told, get up. How do I get up? When my legs have been taken out from under me. We're going to talk about that. Victory is important. But recovery from loss, setback, delay, and denial is crucial to healthy character development. We're talking about character. We're talking about how can I get punched in the face and still get up and keep pressing. It's character. You, we're not talking about you being strong or you having, having more, more stamina. We're talking about you, you, the core of you. Character. Proverbs 24, 16 says it like this. It says, a just man falls seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Now, now, there's so much to unpack in, the, in that text, in that one scripture right there. There are three things that the that, that Holy Spirit showed me uh, from, that, from that text right there. Number one, that failure never changed who he was. It says, a just man falleth seven times. It didn't say a formerly just man or a man who used to be just. He failed, but he, and he was still just. Failure never changes or it shouldn't change who we are. Mm. If failure changes you, it's not failure's fault. That's an issue with character. I told you it's going to be tight. Because, listen, I've, 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 I've fallen, I've, I've messed up, the, the, the bottom has fallen out, and, I, and I, want, I wanted to take my ball and go home. I wanted to quit, say I'm done, I'm through. Just count me out. Character says you still have an assignment. The Bible says a just man falls seven times. He'd never changed who he was. That's number one. Number two, it, what it shows, no one is exempt from falling. He was just. 
He was in right order, right standing, doing what he was supposed to do, and he still failed. Is it possible to be where you need to be, doing what you're supposed to do, and still fall? The answer is yes. So no one is exempt from falling. It happens. Man's born of a woman. Those days are full of trouble. You, we're, it's going to happen. Number three, what it shows us is who, who he was kept him from staying down. That's my best. That's a favorite one of mine. Who he was, what, it, what, this, what that text shows, who he was, it, it, it kept him from staying down. Who was it? What, he was just. It says a just man falls seven times and gets back up again. Who he was, which speaks to his character. His character would not allow him to stay in a fallen place. Character. Character. So how do we bounce back and recover from a perceived failure? There are a couple of things I want us to lay down. And, and, and here's, I'm gonna be, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to give you basic principles today. Because principles are like laws. Same with gravity, the law of gravity. You, you, may not, you may not believe it, but you can't ignore it. So we're going to talk about some principles today. You may not, not want to believe them, but you cannot ignore them. So there's, there's, there's some basic principles. And, and, and I, I want you to, um, again, leadership is my, is, is my jam. That's my thing. Uh, we are all leaders. So when I talk about leaders, I'm not talking about the C, just necessarily the CEOs and, and, and the bishops and all these. High, I'm talking about the mama, the daddy. I'm talking about the big brother. Your leader. Somebody's watching. Anybody who, 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 who is looking to you, looking at you for, for some inspiration, encouragement, makes you a leader. Look at the person beside you and say, hello, leader. You're a leader. You are a leader. You are a leader to a certain degree. We are all leaders. So when I talk, talk about leadership, I'm not just talking about the person running a business. I'm not just talking about the person who's over an organization. If, if you drive in the carpool, you're a leader. Amen. Talking to leaders. If, if mom and them leave you in charge, you're a leader. We can't forget there's some fundamentals, some, some foundational principles of leadership as we talk about how to bounce back, how to recover from failure. There's, there's some, 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 some principles on leadership that we got to understand, especially when it refers to character. Character, number one, character is the foundation of leadership. Character is the foundation of leadership, not how loud you are, not how strong you are, not because you beat the other dude. It's character. Character is the foundation of leadership. Number two, character is the most important component of leadership. Character, it is the most important component. You may, you may have more degrees than a thermometer. You can write a check, the bake bounce, but character, char your character is the most important component of leadership. The next one, character provides the greatest protection for leadership. Your character, our character, keeps us where our talent cannot. And our character provides the greatest protection for leadership. If you are the same when you're up or you're down, in or you're out, that, that character keeps and protects your leadership. When someone would come to say something different, no, that's he the same way. No, she the same way. It protects, it protects, it's the greatest protection for leadership. And this last one, talents and gifts are only as secure as our character. That's my faith. I've been I'm saving these best ones for the last. Talents and gifts are only as secure as your as your as your 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 character. Your your talents and your gifts are only as safe as your character is. That's why you got people who are super talented who never rise to the place of prominence. It doesn't, sound, it doesn't seem fair. You get people who I know people who could, I mean, they, they could sing, 
this singer that's blowing up on the charts under the table. But somewhere their character. If your character's not right, your talent, no matter how good your talent is, the door will not open. Amen. Character is the vessel or the vehicle that our gifts, our skills, and talents are housed in. You ever met somebody really talented but was just nasty? Mm -hmm. Somebody who was really beautiful but just had a stank attitude? It deals with character. Go back to character. Goes back to care. Or you, you maybe found somebody who maybe wasn't the prettiest, but their disposition just made them stand out. Maybe they did, maybe they did not have the best, the best talent or skill, but their, 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 their demeanor just made you want to hear more. It's character. It's character. It's character. And, and our character is the, vi- the vessel or the vehicle that our gifts and skills and talents are housed in. Now, if the vessel is cracked or broken, our gifts, our skills, and talents are lost. If that character, if that vessel, if character's the vessel, if the vessel gets broken, then everything in it gets lost. Jackie Robinson, during the time when they were integrating baseball, was not the best black baseball player. He was not the best. Some, some have speculated that uh, Bumpy Johnson, the other, uh, the other guys were better, were better athletically than Jackie Robinson. But because Jackie Robinson's character was suited so that when he faced racism and faced the backlash of integration, he would not, he would not discredit himself. They knew that, that these other guys, as talented as they were, their character was sketchy. They knew that if, if, the, if, the, if the wrong person called them the N-word, then they would go into the stands with the bat and it'd be over. So because of Jackie Robinson's character, he got the nod to go forward because more, more was at stake than just his stats. Oh, my God. More was at stake than just, than just him being a top-notch player. He was an ambassador moving into a space that had never been moved into. And his character was the key component that opened that door. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. You're saying you're looking at other people's talent, but God says, I'm not looking at their talent more than I'm looking at their character. Oh, God. Because there, because there, there are some talented people, but when, and, and God understands, if you get in that spot, it's going to be all about you and not about me. God says, I, can I trust you to put you in spheres of influence, to, to expose you to new things. And can I trust that your character will keep you at a place to where I will still, God will still get the glory. Mm, somebody shout character. So how is character manifested? How is character manifested? Character is manifested when our values, when our principles, when our morals and our standards are tested. In the last couple of weeks, we talked about temptation. When our, when our values, when our principles and our morals, when they are tested, we begin to see the manifestation of character. You know what? You, you, okay, let me break it down. Grandma said pressure busts a pipe. Pressure will show you, will reveal what's in there. Oh, my God. Pressure and temptation, they provoke character. When we're counseling, when we're doing premarital counseling, we've had, we ask each one of those, each one of those, those, those individuals with, with, with the, with the, they look and all they just see, they, all they see is love. All they, I mean, they just love each other so much. They just, I mean, they love, they, 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 they eating popcorn and they sucking the butter off each other's fingers. It's just wonderful. It's so, I, we ask the question, have you seen them mad? Have you seen them angry? What's their response 
when stuff don't ha go right. Do they tear up stuff, break up stuff, punch holes in the walls? Do, what do they do? What do they do when stuff doesn't go the way they want? Because understand, it, it, it may be Netflix and chill today, but, but the bill going to come. And if you're not sure about their character, if they're not going to be consistent, even when stuff don't go right, you might need to look at that. Yeah. Do they subscribe to karate or karate? These are questions you got, you got to ask. You got to, have you seen them mad? How do they respond? How do they react? Is when pressure, when pressure and temptation is applied. Remember, temptation is it 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 is it is testing for weakness. To tempt means to test for weakness. How do they respond? Character is manifested through pressure and tempting. It provokes character. Whatever's in there is gonna come out. Come on, let's be honest. Let's stay, let's stay right there for a minute. You're trying to impress somebody. You're going to put your best foot forward. Come on. You're going to put the good smelling cologne. I'm talking about the stuff you've just saved for special occasions. You're going to put the good cologne on. You're going to, I mean, you try, because you're trying to impress. You're, try, you're trying to sh show the best side of you. But we both know the best side of you does not always show up. The best side of you does not always answer the door. And pressure will show you what's really there. Ah, amen. We don't really believe, listen to this, we don't really believe what we say we believe until that thing is tested. We don't really believe what we say we believe until it is really tested. Think about it. Think about it. We don't really rock with it until we, uh, we've tested its durability. Hallelujah. Okay? You ever been, been through something with somebody and they stuck with you and you say, that's why I roll with you. Because you just went through a test and you passed. It's got to be tested. Test and pressure, they confirm true convictions. Tell my character. Test and pressure confirm true convictions. My dad, <laughs> my dad was um, driving. We was doing revival and um, he had uh, three other preachers. In the car with him, and he that was when we had we had that Buick, big old Buick. You know, the front seat was a bucket seat, was a was a love seat, was a couch. <laughs> you know, that front seat you could put four people right there on the front seat, and had that and duplicated in the back. You just, so I'm sitting right up under him, and another preacher sitting right here, and then uh, my brother and my sister in the back, and so it was like eight eight deep. It was eight deep in that car. So my dad said, he said, watch this, watch this. And so they got to talk. Because they was talking. One preaching in the back, I'm ready to go right now. If the Lord called me now, I'm ready to go. He was just really just dogmatic. I'm ready to go. My business is straight with the Lord. I'm ready to go. And the other guy in front, yeah, I'm, right. I'm ready to go too. I'm ready. So he coming to this train. He saw the train coming. He saw the train coming. And he come and he slammed on the brake. Oh, preaching the back. Oh, Jesus, I ain't ready to go yet. Oh, God, don't take me. True story. True story. Everybody talking about heaven ain't ready to go. Thing is, the thing is, it's we don't really believe what we say we believe until that thing is tested. 
till that thing is tested. They didn't like my dad for a long time after that. <laughs> they was mad at my dad for a long time. You've heard me say it like this, and I'll say it again. Whatever we declare, we, it, it, it will be disputed, but it must be defended. Whatever we declare, it will be. De- the devil, when you make that declaration, oh, the, the devil says, oh, really? Really? Let's just see about that. Whatever you declare, it will be disputed, but it must be defended. And character has everything to do with your defense of your declaration. Hallelujah. Whatever we value, we attract and reflect. Whatever we value. You can tell me what you believe, what you love all the time, but I'm going to look at what I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at. Are there butterflies or blowflies that surround you? Because whatever we value, we attract and we reflect. Whatever we value, we attract it and we reflect it. Conversely, whatever we devalue or hate, we repel. Let it marinate. Whatever I put value in, whatever I say is valuable, you're going fi- to find it around me. You're going to find it around me. You're going to find it. It's, just, it, 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 it's, it's drawn to me. Whatever I place value, whatever I deem as valuable, that's what's going to be in abundance around me. Does that make sense? Conversely, whatever I devalue, you're going to hardly, hardly see it if ever. Just bowl it down your alley. You, when you start looking for cars and you pick one out, you see them everywhere. You see them everywhere. When you make up your mind, okay, this one I like, you start seeing them everywhere. Where, where, where they come from? They've been there the whole time. Been there the whole time. But you've now placed a value on it. You've now placed a, sig- a, a, a significant interest in it. And it begins, they begin to stand out to you. It's important. Now, if, 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 evil, if evil people, if evil people approach us with an ungodly or unholy request, I need to tell you something. We're already in trouble. Why is that, Pastor? If, if, if no good jokers come to you with a scheme that, you, that, that, that is no good from the beginning, we're already in trouble. You know why? Because if they know our values, they wouldn't even come that way. If they, if they knew your va- if your values were loud enough. I've had people say, you know, I mean, when I was growing up, I was, I was trying. Church boy, grew up. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to get out there. I'm, try, I'm trying to get out there and do me something. Can I be honest? I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to get to somebody's club. I, I just want to know what, it, what, it, what it's like. And my friends would say, no, don't ask, don't, don't ask Rafford. He can't go. Rafford ain't down. I'm like, how y'all know what y'all, why y'all, you ain't even asked me. Why? Because my values were screaming. My values were loud. My values were loud. Anybody that's no good, an evil person that comes and approaches you to get in on their scheme, your values aren't loud enough. I told you it's going to be tight today. A value. How loud are your values? It's a, ref- it's, it, it's a reflection. It goes back to your character. How loud are your values? Effective leaders, mamas, daddies, big brothers, effective leaders possess and express the following values. There's faithfulness, self-control, stability, Integrity towards those we serve or those who are following us. We're not going to tell them nothing that's going to get them in trouble or get them hurt. 
Sometimes I had to, I had to remind my daughter, I don't want you hurt. I'm not, what I'm telling you is not to hurt you. Have I ever said anything that got you hurt? Everything I'm telling you is to protect you, to cover you. You just don't like it. You just don't like what I'm saying. Effective leaders, we, these values are, are present. We're responsible. You, you have responsible thought transmission. You're careful with how you communicate. Because you need the people who are following you to really hear what you're saying. Another value is personal integrity. There's a personal integrity that's there. Maturity and then humility. These are the these are effective leaders possess these these values. Effective leaders understand the impact of their leadership. So in the last few minutes, how impactful is a leader's failure? Because sometimes we think, okay, I messed up, no big deal. Oh, it is a big deal. And I, must, I, I, I ask the Holy Spirit, why will we stop here? Because we're going we're gonna to pick up on how, on how, on really how we dig into how to recover. But I, I need this to sit. Holy Spirit needs this to sit, needs this to sit because you, we live in such an instamatic society. We figure, okay, if I just admit I messed up, it's, it's, it's okay. No. If, 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 if your moral failure as a leader can ease, can, is, is so easily dismissed, then you don't really know the value of your leadership. And this is going to have to sit with you for, for, for a, a, at least the next seven days because I need you to understand. Because So we, before we make, the, the Bible says <sighs> that before man builds a house, he'll count up the cost. Before man, he'll count up the cost. And, and this is, this is going to sound, ooh, this is going to be real rigid. It's going to sound real rigid. But this is how important leadership is. This is how important being, being a father, a man of God as a husband, a man of God as a father, being a woman of God as a wife, being a woman of God as a mother. This is how important it is because your influence, it has ripples, it has rippling effects. And I know we live in a, in, a, in, a, in a disposable, discardable society. But your, your, your influence, your, your, your trust or the trust that people give you cannot, cannot be handled so frivolously. We can't just discard it like, 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 an old, like old McDonald's bag. It's important. So how impactful is a leader's failure? Number one, failure in leadership isn't as, as bad as failing to deal with that failure effectively. The failure is bad, but it's not as bad as if you don't, as if you don't. All right, my time's up. All right. The failure isn't as bad as you failing to deal with it effectively. I told you, we all going to fail. We all going to have times when we miss it. So, so that's not as bad, but when you ignore it, act like it wasn't no big deal, that's even worse. Everybody fails at something. The failure is not the problem. Failing to deal with it is the problem. Because, because most of us don't know how to handle failure. It's a brazen, it's a brazen act when, you, when, you, when you've broken trust with somebody and then you get up in their face like ain't nothing happened. And then it's the, then it's the other person's fault if, 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 if they want to lay hands on you. It's a brazen act. It's a brazen heartless, soulless act to, to misuse trust and then walk into their face like nothing happened. 
failure is not the problem. Everybody fails. Everybody misses it. But it's when you act like it wasn't no big deal, when you don't deal with it effectively. This is the impact of a leader's failure. Okay? I tried, did my best to not promise my kids stuff and then don't deliver. I, 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 I did, I, 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 I missed, I, there, there, were, there were moments I missed it, and it, it, it hurt me because I understood the impact. The impact is important. Number two, failure in leadership is the, is the forceful closure of a trust account. When we enter failure or moral failure as a leader, that trust account with the people who were following you is forcefully closed. It's forcefully closed. You don't have access to that account anymore. Which is why as, as when we counsel people who who going through uh, marital uh, issues and people are, I don't know why you can't get over no, it. No, they can't get over it just like that. You violated the account. You violated the account. And you want you want you wanting you wanting the other person to just get over it. Trust has been broken. And so I'm not listen, I'm not this I'm not trying to condemn you, but I need you to understand the weight of it. If we understand the weight of it in front of before we do it, maybe it'll affect our decisions and we won't do it. There, let me, can I tell you, there have been times I've been, I've, been, I've been approached, been enticed, and my wife has to listen. Come on now. This Denzel Will Smith hybrid is. It's the cross I bear, Crystal. It's the cross I bear. So I've been approached. I've been approached. I've been approached. You know, <laughs> that whole, whole, uh, uh, I, I, that ain't my story about I ain't never been with a baddie. I got a baddie right here. I added her to my daddy. But the thing, I've been approached, and the thing that goes through my mind is, how is this going to affect my children? How is this going to affect the people that, 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 that look to me? I, 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 I run that scenario. That is the training uh, 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 scenario that goes, that goes in my mind. How is this going to play out when I try to stand before somebody? That's what I, that's, that has to be the protocol. So I want you to look at it now, especially young people. Look at it now that, that, that this trust that I have right now with these individuals, my failure to lead effectively, it forces a, it's a forceful closure of that trust. And I, I am heartless. I am soulless to think that it's just a, like business as usual. Why are you mad? It's, 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 it's that important. Oh, you're bringing us down now, Pastor. Well, you know what? This is what, real, this is what the real church is. Church ain't just patting you up and making you feel good. Sometimes you got to deal with the stanky stuff that's there. We got to deal with that. This right here does not honor God. And then you're going to try to throw scripture. You probably be a Christian. You got to forgive. Ooh, I got something for you. I got something. Forgiveness does not mean restoration of relationship. I can forgive you, but there's still a matter of clearance. Okay. Number three, trust is the currency. Trust is the currency of leadership and the secret to leadership success. Trust is the currency of leadership and the secret to leadership success. It's, 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 it's the value. Trust is what is the most valuable thing. 
So when I, I ask myself that question, because it's the most valuable thing. How is this going to affect my children? How is this going to affect my church? How is this going to affect the relationship with my, with my wife? It, that's because that's, trust is the currency. The key to leadership is trust. If nobody trusts you, nobody's following you. Thank you for that one hand clap. If that's what, could that be why your kids ignoring you right now? Because they don't trust you no more. I pull my daughter to the side often. I say, Sydney, you know I love you. You know I love you, right? I need her to hear. I need. I need to hear her because she's so much like me. We clash. We. I mean, we. We clash because we are. She is my mini me. She is. She. We clash. I mean, and so. As her father, I'm trying to lead her in directions that I, I can see it a mile away. And my daughter, because she's her father's child, can be strong-willed. And so the soft demeanor don't work sometimes. And I got to get up in her face. And sometimes I got to pull, I had to pull back. Sydney, you know I love you. I need you to know, you need to know I love you. I'm trying to keep the trust. I would never do anything to hurt you intentionally, to embarrass you. But baby girl, I need you to hear me. Trying to re, I'm trying to reinforce the trust because nobody will follow you if they don't trust you. People follow us because they trust us. And once we violate that, we lose that trust. Real quick, real quick. our leadership is as safe as the trust account we protect. Your leadership is as safe as the trust account. You protect that. That's, that's, that's why I asked the questions. I'm protecting the account. How is this going to affect my children? How is this going to affect my ministry? How is this going to affect my wife? This is, I'm, that's my trust account, and I want to protect that trust account. And because of that, I, I make the decision that secures the trust account. Pretending that it didn't happen doesn't make it go away. We got to deal with it. We got to deal with the elephant in the room. We got to deal with it. What I like, we so we've seen, we've seen. If you if you got a pulse, you've seen what's you got a pulse, and our on social media, you've seen uh, with uh, uh, pastor the pastor in Oklahoma, who 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 did what he did. God bless him. I was praying for him yesterday. Right here, I was praying for him yesterday. They say, when the spit hit the fan, so you don't know it. He spit in his hands, rubbed it on his brother's eyes. It's, it got worldwide attention. What I, what I can appreciate about the pastor is that he owned it. He came and he said, you know what? I missed it. I saw it. It was gross. From, when I saw that, I said, you know what? You got my respect. Because you owned it. You owned it. If you bought it, my grandma said, if you bought it, own it. Let me balance it. Let me balance that. Now, just because you own it don't mean that everybody else got to buy it. <laughs> which, is where some of the, well, which is where some of our slick brothers and sisters try to they live. You know what? I did this. You know, it is, you know, it is what it is. When I hear it is what it is, I want to go... You know, I did this and, you know, when you, when you hear that, <laughs> you know, I did this and you 
own it. Give people the grace to process it. Just because you're honest about I'm going to be honest with you and tell you. Just because you're honest, it still ain't right. Your honesty just took another layer of deception that could have delayed the process even further. Am I making sense? So forgiveness is not restoration. Just because I forgive you doesn't mean we restore. <sighs> Trust takes longer to rebuild than to build. Trust takes longer to rebuild than it takes to build it. Because when we're building it, I got no previous point of reference. I have no reason to doubt or question. Trust takes longer to rebuild than it does to build. It will always take longer to rebuild trust than it originally took to build it or establish it. stop right here and we're going to talk next week about so the nuts and bolts of rebuilding this thing getting it restoring it getting it back but I need I need you to hear 